What's going on guys? Welcome to another video on oil stoves. What we're gonna do today is something that a lot of people have questions about and it's taking apart the carburetor. We're gonna look at all the components, um, make sure everyone understands the high and low flame screws because that's how you adjust it, uh, things like that. They can be confusing, but once you know how they work, they work wonders and you actually get a very efficient heat from them. So if you like this video, hit that thumbs up, comment, subscribe, hit that bell so you get notified when I put new videos. And if you have any ideas or if this helped, please leave it in the comments so I know this is useful for everybody watching. All right, let's get right into it. So this is what the carburetor looks like behind the stove. As you can see, it's the standard type. I just bought this stove to make YouTube videos. So we're gonna do a bunch of tests on it. The first step is to take the two bolts apart here. Make sure the fuel line is uh, loosened off as well. And we're gonna take a small screwdriver here to take the bolt or to take the screw off here. That way the rod, the control rod here is not uh, in the way. So before we take the other bolt off, we're gonna loosen up the fuel line. That way we don't have this uh, being forced all over the place. So uh, loosen this one before you loosen uh, all of your bolts on underneath. Alright, so we actually had three bolts underneath the one uh, fuel line and this little uh, screw here for the rod. Uh, and now we could take this whole thing apart, bring it in the basement and we'll open it up to uh, show you the components. Essentially how these work is that your oil input is right here. So this is where your oil comes in from your tank, either outside or inside your, your cabin house or ice shack. And here's the filter. So with this filter port, we're gonna open up here. Um, it's two flathead screws. You can make sure, uh, clean it out once in a while, maybe once or twice a year, make sure it's not clogged up. And right here, the bottom part is where the oil goes into the stove. So we saw it earlier uh, when we took it apart, that's the outlet. So that's pretty much it. You have your inlet, your outlet here, and it's even identified. So here we could see the little in, and then you see the little arrow here pointing down. So fairly straightforward, and you even have an oil level. Uh, so that's the ideal oil level. We have the on and off lever. So this is the little emergency. As you can see, press to start, lift to shut off. So pretty much you push down and then it's gonna get the oil flowing again out of this, this nozzle here. It drips out into the stove. And when you wanna shut it off, you just lift it up like that. It is an auto shut off. So once it's down and if you see it, it clicks up a lot, um, hold it. What I do is I just hold it down a little bit, let the oil flow. And sometimes there's just too much oil in the overflow compartment, which we'll see in a second. At the top here, you have your uh, control dial. So that's where the rod goes in. So from one all the way up to six and you have your high fire decrease screw right here and your and your low fire right here is your low fire decrease uh, knob right there so those are two small flatheads flathead screws these these four screws right here is just to hold the uh, the plate onto the regulator so we're going to take those off and if you're wondering what this little knob is here it's like a button as you can see this is if you have a thermostat and you connect it onto here. So we're gonna ignore that for today because I'm just gonna assume everyone's using these uh, without a thermostat. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is take the filter port off. So we're just gonna take these two screws off right here. And we're gonna take the plate off, just put it to the side. As you can see, there, there is a seal in here um, so this one seems to be fairly good, but if it's, if it's shot, you can just replace it. You get some paper seals or uh, stuff like that. So that's important. So it doesn't leak. And then we have the filter right in here. So we're just going to try and take it out by gravity. If not, we have to maybe pry, pry it out. So you want to be very gentle with this here. Thank you. 
All right, so that's what the filter looks like. Um, that's the end piece here that we just uh, took apart. That's what you'll see. You can even take a pair of pliers and just uh, pull it out with that little, uh, that little piece of plastic there. Be very careful. This is like a plastic nylon material. So if you have any grime in here, what you want to do is take maybe a small toothbrush, nothing with metal bristles. Metal bristles will tear this apart. Um, so you don't want to do that. Essentially, the oil flows in here and then it comes out the uh, filter on the side. So this right here, um, oil comes in this port right here. It then flows inside here. And once it's filtered, that's where it comes out of here. So the filter is all along this piece right here, right? So the oil comes in. So if we pretend this filter is right here, the, f the oil just flows into it and then out the net or out the filter. So this one looks pretty clean. Uh, we don't even have to clean it. Uh, we're just going to put that to the side. That's what the inside looks like. So for the next step, we're going to take this uh, top plate off. So again, it's just four flathead screws. So we're going to get, get to that there. All right, so taking the plate off, this is what it looks like in the inside. So we're just going to put that to the side. And there we go. So it looks pretty complex, but it's not that complex. You'll see. So here's the main float right here. And here's the overflow or backup float in the back. I don't know if you can see it, but that's sort of the emergency uh, backup float. So you can see that little metal wall in there. Once oil flows over that and activates this float in the back here, this one, it, it's going to lift it up and cause this lever here. It's going to cause this lever to trip. So once it's down, in a running state, your uh, oil stove is going to have the lever in a down position. But once this, you can see this whole arm is connected all the way to the back of that float. So you can see it's all connected. So once, watch what happens when I pull it up manually with my finger. So let's say this float pulls up. Watch that lever on the right. It pops up. So. Once again, you activate the uh, stove, and once this float here pulls up, it's gonna automatically stop it. So that's the only purpose of this float in the back right here. Yeah, it's connected all the way up to here, as you can see. So again, that backup float if the oil goes above this line it's going to cause this to trip so this main float here is going to go up and down with the level of oil so what's going to happen here is once oil flows into this compartment it's going to go up and when it goes up All right, so it's really hard showing the camera, but all right, I got it to focus. This little port in the back is attached to your adjustment knob. So it's really hard to see, but so watch what happens when I turn the knob right here from zero to six. So right now it's in the off position. When I turn it, so it's actually that silver plate with the screw there that is going up and down. So remembering what this screw is right here, this right here is the low fire decrease. So you want to turn this counterclockwise when you want to decrease the flame. So at its lowest point, almost like an idle. Think of this one as an idle uh, adjustment. So if I take the plate off, So 
So this screw here actually adjusts that metal plate. All right, so I'm gonna show you what happens when I turn this. So you should see the gap between that silver screw and the plate moving. So that's how you adjust it because when you turn the knob, that silver screw is using that as a stopper to, to, uh, to control here, the orifice. So it's really hard to see, but... So at the bottom there is the orifice. When I turn it to six, you can see the gap opening. When I turn it to one, it closes. So, so this piece right here is where the oil flows from your regulator into the stove. So again, right here, if you take a close look, now it's at zero, I'm gonna turn it to one all the way up to six. So you can see that gap forming. It's really hard to see on the camera, but I can't zoom in enough. So you can see how everything is moving. That silver screw here determines the gap in the orifice. So that's your low flame adjustment. The high flame adjustment is found right here. So let's see what this does when we adjust it. So high flame meaning at six. So as you can see this screw here, it stops this plate from going any higher. See that? So the low flame screw is right here. It controls how far down the orifice opens up. See that? So when we adjust the low flame screw, the low flame screw is actually this guy right here. So it's gonna control this plate right here. It's gonna control how high and low it goes. And that's gonna determine where this guy stops. So again, there you go. For the high flame decrease, it determines how far up this plate goes. So again, so if we unscrew it, this is gonna allow it to travel higher. So the higher it goes, the more the orifice opens up, as you can see. So essentially your whole oil stove, your adjustments is to control how low and, and how high this plate goes. And this plate here is directly connected to the orifice. You can see it open and close right there. So it controls how far down it goes and how far up it goes. So again, this plate here is adjusted by the knob. So pay close attention when I turn the knob, watch that whole plate move down. And then back up, back down, back up, back down. So essentially that's how your stove works. This is your overflow in the back. It's just an emergency. And this is to, this is to start and stop your stove. And that is about it. So it's very simple. Once this is clean, it, it should run like a charm. I mean, these things are pretty uh, efficient. And this little window here, I've never even noticed, but, um, oh, it's not even a window. Huh. Oh, look at that. It's not even a window. It's just part of the casing. Okay. All right. Disregard. I don't know why I thought this was a window, but it's even identified here out. So there you go. Very simple, uh, very simple design. But you know what? If you keep these clean, uh, they work wonders. So. All right, so I hope I didn't confuse anybody there, but if you want to see an animated version, I created a side view, like a 2D model, where I show how everything works. Check out my other video. If you like this, comment, like, subscribe, and hit that bell for more videos so you get notified. Hope everyone enjoys their evening, and see you next time. Hi.